How's it going everyone? Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today I wanted to talk about jump to label instructions and these instructions are part of RSLogix and Studio 5000 PLC programming and can be extremely useful in very specific situations. That being said, when used excessively or used without comments and proper structure can become problematic and we're going to look at a few examples on how to set up these instructions for using in your programs but we're also going to look at what kind of trouble they can create for programmers that come in after you and try to troubleshoot your code or try to add to it. So let's start working with a very practical example. So what I've got in front of you is an example of a palletizer that I've covered in a previous video. But essentially what it's doing is it's simulating the loading of cases onto a pallet. So there's going to be this infit section that consists of three rungs. So rung number zero, rung number one, and then rung number two. And when enabled, as you can see by the bit called pal underscore D zero dot two, which is the palletizer infit enabled status it's going to load these cases on an interval when there's less than 10 cases in the queue so every now and then you're going to see it drop down to eight because the palletizer has picked up a few cases and it's going to load one and then the other so it increments from eight goes back to nine and then ten and then waits for the cases to deplete again now if i disable this sequence so for example if i enable the stop push button and i put it back online, you'll notice that the skew is going to continue to deplete until it reaches zero. And then the other sequence of the palletizer is not going to work. So in other words, it's going to, when enabled, execute this rung one, as well as this rung two, in order to say that it has been filled when it comes to the queue. So once again, if I re-enable this by pressing the start push button, you'll notice that the timer is going to count after uh, 100 or 1000 milliseconds, which is one second, and then reload the cases onto the infeed. Now, what can be done in this case in order to save, for example, some memory time or just make your code more efficient is that when it's not enabled, there's no need to scan rungs one and two because regardless, they're not going to do anything. So what I can do here as an example is I'm going to add a label. So in case that the palletizer is disabled, I'm going to create a rung. So we're going to use an XIO instruction, convert this to an XIO, press on enter. So if it's not enabled, we're going to jump. Sorry, that's not going to be a new rung. That's going to be a jump instruction. So JMP is going to be the ticker. And here we're going to say palletizer in feed disabled. And we're going to have to create an associated label. So I'm going to go down to rung number four, which then skips the other two rungs. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a label instruction. So LBL, change that. And that's going to be palletizer in feed disabled. You'll notice that the errors went away because it now knows where it needs to go if the palletizer in feed is disabled. We can compile this code and press on enter. And so you'll notice. I guess no difference at the beginning because first of all, it is not disabled, but one of the things that it does do is once we press the stop push button and then we put that back in, you'll notice that this disabled is going to jump to the label that we have in rung number four. Now at first glance, the logic remains the same since we have something that is just not scanning the bits, but you'll quickly notice that as an example, this greater than or equals to instruction is never going to read because the RSLogix 5000 or Studio 5000 environment is skipping this specific rung. So number one, this full status is never going to unlatch. As you can see, the number of cases is definitely below 10, but it's not unlatching the full status bit. So that's going to be the number one problem that we'll notice, but that's just an indicator. That's not something that we really need to worry about. What can happen as a problem is that if a programmer comes in after you and, and decides to add some kind of a condition, if it's going to be between the GMP and the LBL instruction, it's going to create a lot of confusion unless properly documented. So in case of this scenario, what I would typically do is I can either right click and select add a comment. 
So it's going to be edit run comment or I can do control D which is the shortcut and then I can say JMP instruction avoid following rungs when system is disabled. I would also add do not add code before the LBL. So this is a comment that I would typically make for programmers that come in after me because this will be essentially like a red flag if I do decide to use the jump instruction so that they don't add anything that's going to be confusing. And let's look at an example of that. So for example, I can put this here and obviously as you would expect if I add any rung, so for example, if I want to check the number of cases and send that data to any of my other systems, so let's see here, this is going to be pal underscore D1. So I'm going to use a move instruction. So as an example, pal underscore D1, that's going to be the number of cases in the infeed system. And I want to write that into number of cases at infeed, for example, to use in a different routine or for other purposes in different logic. So I'm going to right click this, create new number of cases at infeed. This is going to be a double integer, Pr press on create. And I'm going to add this rung of logic in between the labels. Now, what you'll notice is that of course, this is going to always remain at zero, not only because this is actually, so let's, let's actually test this out. So I'm going to start the palletizer infeed once again, and I'm going to let this number of boxes increment. And you'll notice that as it increments, it should go and start counting to three, four, five, six, seven, and it's going to update my number of cases at infeed. As soon as I stop incrementing this infeed, you'll notice that the number of cases should still deplete. So it's going down to eight, it's gonna go down to six in a few seconds, it's going to go down to four, but the number of cases at infeed is no longer going to be updated. And that's because it has been placed between this JMP and LBL instruction that is currently disabled. And what I'm showing you here is a fairly straightforward example, but it's a trap for new or novice PLC programmers. And what you should be doing is instead of having this rung in number three in this position, you should be adding this below label. So I would not necessarily recommend adding it maybe here, maybe at the beginning of your program based on the context. But if you add it as rung number six, let's look at the difference. So in number six, or in this case, in rung number five, you'll notice that if we start the palletizer in feed, and of course, toggle back the start push button, the number of cases are, is going to start incrementing, we're going to always update this number of cases at in feed. And if we disable the in feed, it's going to continue updating because it's not skipping those rungs. So once again, if I toggle the stop push button, and I put the enable status to off, what you'll notice is that the number of cases of in, at infeed is going to continue being updated. And this is one of the interview questions that I would ask as well. If I place this instruction here, what do you believe, believe will happen? So it doesn't take long to be very cautious of label and jump to label instructions. As I always mention, use them with caution. If you are going to use them, make sure to leave the comments. In any case, that's all I have for you today. If you have any questions about these instructions or otherwise, make sure to post them in the forum.